I have been through scandal. I have seen a sexual scandal almost destroy a ministry and completely shook my life. The people who are involved were people I loved and highly, highly respected. And I know that people can fall into this situation. Some are predators, but some are just victims. Hi everyone, it's Judy Karanja. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for watching. On this channel, I talk about relationships, family, wellness, and faith. Do not have private counseling sessions with a member of the opposite sex. And this one has failed many men and women of God where it was an innocent counseling session. And the ministry did not have the rule that men counsel men and women counsel women. And so a man and a woman began this counseling session and eventually because of meeting needs and understanding a sense of closeness comes and soon they're crossing boundaries throwing away common sense they're falling in love they're beginning to sneak around together don't do it remember this if you don't remember much today people fall in love with those who meet their needs if you look at the description of love it's all about meeting somebody's needs what you do to this other person people tend to fall in love with somebody who meets their needs so you when you make yourself the primary source of counseling the primary source of comfort to a person of the opposite sex you're setting yourself up for a trap we have a rule with my husband the men should counsel the men the women should counsel the women and if for example maybe the man has an expertise in knowledge or skill concerning a certain area and they need to be there counseling the woman then do it with your wife do it with your wife or do it with another member of the opposite sex in the room what that does is that it keeps shenanigans from happening whether it's unintentional accountability in a third person stops that from happening or whether it's intentional some people feign need to get counseling with men and women of god avoid the situation of having private interviews with a minister of the gospel of the opposite gender maybe you're a musician we've had this happen where someone is looking for a break they want to be a backup singer or they want a producer and they're told to come in for a session and it's a private session and in that session they were probably raped or just seduced into sexual sin as much as possible ask to meet them in a public place ask if you can bring someone along and let this someone be your protection and if they have a problem with it that is a red flag your alarm bells should go off better to lose an opportunity than to lose your integrity you have to have the attitude of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego it's either bow or ban I'm not bowing if I ban I ban but I'm not gonna compromise to be able to get the opportunity that I really want from you do not do private prayer sessions with someone of the opposite gender if you're the pastor and you live in a neighborhood with a lady maybe your wife works maybe you're single and anytime you're going for Kesha you're picking her you're driving her to Kesha or when you're coming back from Kesha in the morning you're the one bringing them avoid those situations it is okay if people say you are mean let them call you mean but do not be the person who constantly provides a personal need even travel in your car with a member of the opposite sex the Bible says avoid every appearance of evil it's not enough that you don't intend to do wrong. It also matters that you don't make other people think you're doing wrong. God says that appearance destroys the testimony of God. The fact that a man is picking you and dropping you who's not your husband, whether you're single or married or he's single or married, gives a wrong impression. And it looks like you probably went out, spend the night and now they're dropping you. Anyone who insists on seeing you in private of the opposite gender, avoid it let it go god will open that door to you without sorrow and without seduction i remember when i was in campus a lecturer called to see me i cannot remember i think it was a friday evening it was quite unusual and i had to go down to the department where where he was quite far from the hostels actually and i had had all the stories i knew probably what was going on what i did i got a brother who was part of the christian union where i was in college and i said please take me in fact he offered in fact he offered he said let me take you and i'll be right outside the door so that if he tries anything funny i'm in there so i went and of course, the lecturer thought I was alone and I walked into his office and he told me, I can see you're doing very well and I'm very happy with you. I'm very happy with your grades. And inside me, I'm saying, well, thank you, sir. Um, I appreciate it. Um, and then he started seducing and tuning me and telling me he wanted to take me out. 
he wanted to meet me after class on one of these days if I would be okay with it. Because I had a brother from the CU outside who was probably listening to this whole conversation, I had more boldness and I had more confidence. And I looked him in the eye and I told him, listen, if you ever call me, to propose to me a relationship with you, please know that it is out of line for me as your student. You're a married man. I'm a Christian. I don't do it. Don't ever propose this to me again. I'm not that kind of girl and I don't appreciate it. He was stunned and I turned and I walked out. Why bow or burn? I'm not bowing. If I burn, I burn. They say Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. If God rescues us, he rescues us. But if we burn, we will still burn king. We will not bow to you. Then God saw it fit that I burn. Don't be so scared of losing your grids. Don't be so scared of losing the anointing, of losing the covering, of losing your spot in the choir, of losing leadership of that ministry team and have a minister of the gospel dangle that carrot that if you don't do this, then you will lose that. Let me lose everything. I count it all but nothing that I may know Christ. I want to stand before God and I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. You are not the final authority. You are not the highest authority. One day I will stand before God and you will be nowhere in sight. And I will have to be accountable to God for what I did with my life and my sexuality. And you are not going to make me lose that.